Thanks for checking out the Bosch and Roll channel. If you want to see me play your deck, hang out with me and the amazing Bosch and Roll community in Discord, access to my lists and sideboard guides before tournaments, book an individual coaching session, or just generally want to support what's going on here, check out the Patreon and YouTube membership options. For the finest Magic the Gathering apparel on the market, use code Bosch and Roll for 10% off your order at coalesceapparel.shop. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. If you want to play what I'm playing, use my affiliate link to support the channel while you shop for cards at tcgplayer.com and play any deck anytime on Magic Online with a cardhoarder.com loan account. Thanks for being here. Let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today, I'm playing in here at the request of Patreon subscriber Red Rags. I've been doing a little mini series on Pioneer in the run-up to MagicCon 30, where the main events are Pioneer, at least the main competitive events. I've played Mono Blue Spirits and Rakdos Midrange, both of which were awesome. Had a really good time with that. I know Pioneer is not the go-to on this channel, but if you like seeing it, make sure to like and comment and let me know that you like seeing it. In other news, this is the first video I've recorded from my new setup at home. Hopefully this won't affect your lives at all, but I just did a massive rearranging of my house to give myself a better recording space. It's still a work in progress, but I did have to unplug my whole rig and move it and move wires around. It's in a different room, maybe different acoustics, maybe the internet's faster, maybe it's slower. I don't know. Uh, if you notice anything, that's probably part of it. Let me know if there's any major problems, but I hope it's imperceptible on your end. But big moves over here in the Boston Roll House. Anyway, let's talk about this deck. This is Abzan Greasefang. Greasefang is, of course, the namesake of the deck. Okiba Boss, one white black, legendary rat pilot. At the beginning of combat on your turn, return target vehicle card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste. Return it to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. So what does Greasefang ask us to do? It asks us to put a vehicle into our graveyard that's worth reanimating and can get something done in just one hit because it bounces at the end of the turn. Greasefang does not automatically crew that vehicle, doesn't make it a creature, but Greasefang does have four power, which is the threshold to crewing some of Magic's chonkiest vehicles, crew four, crew three, crew four. Wizards has done a really good job over multiple blocks that include vehicles of making four just about as big as it gets. If you look back at like Oval Chase Daredevil and these really specific vehicle themed cards, a lot of them have four power and that's not an accident. That's that's Wizards working their magic behind the scenes. Three Spangs, four power, crews all of the vehicles in the deck. The heftiest of them is Parhelion 2. Flying, first strike, vigilance, 5-5. Five, five. When Parhelion 2 attacks, create two 4-4 four, four white angel creature tokens with flying and vigilance that are attacking. This thing gets in for 13 on its own, and then at the end of the turn when it bounces, it leaves behind two 4-4 four, four angels, which 13 plus 8 is 21, which is dead in the Magic the Gathering world. If you connect with a Parhelion, you should be in good shape. Essica's Chariot makes 2-2 two, two cats when it comes into play, and when it attacks, it copies one of those cats. That leaves behind material when it bounces at the end of the turn. Sky Sovereign deals 3 damage to a creature or planeswalker on arrival and when it attacks, so that leaves a dent on the battlefield even if it doesn't leave material behind. All of these vehicles are worth putting into play, and they do something other than just attack for damage. They affect the board in some meaningful way after they leave play. How do we get them in the graveyard? Reese Fang costs 3, which means we want these things in the graveyard before turn 3, because turn 3 is when we want to execute this battle plan. Rest and Thoughtseize, check the hand of the opponent for 1 mana, just clear the launch pad. For Fiend's Informant, Connives, that's a draw and discard, just a loot. That's a good way to get a vehicle that's in your hand into the graveyard. Seder Wayfinder, look at your top 4 cards, put a land from among them into your hand, the rest into your graveyard. This hits land number 3 for Greasefang and has a shot at dumping it. A vehicle. Grizzly Salvage, very comparable to Seder Wayfinder, except you look at five cards and you don't get a 1 1. You can choose a creature. This one can grab the Grease Fang or the land, whichever part of the combo you need. 
Witherbloom Command mills three. You can pick up a land while filling your graveyard. One Liliana of the Veil. Lily is just a disruptive high power card that also gives you these discard synergies that you're into for the deck. Really interesting to me that Liliana is a one of. Because I remember the Grease Fang deck was already a thing before Liliana was reprinted in whatever set that was in. Dominaria something. I don't know. This card is currently legal and standard is what I'm saying. And people were pretty hyped on Liliana in Rakdos midrange. And you'll notice the deck that I played last week did not have any copies of that card. And people were really hyped on it in Grease Fang, which you'll notice I'm only playing one of. And we can reverse engineer the reason for that. Not being a huge pioneer person myself is, you know, what does it do? On three, you want to be deploying Grease Fang. Liliana doesn't get the vehicles in your graveyard before then. It doesn't cash out the vehicles that all these other things have put in there. It's just, you know, a generic good card flex slot. Honestly, looking at the synergy of the rest of the deck, this 60th card, one of Liliana, looks kind of just random. Like, this could be almost anything. Makes sense that it's Liliana on raw power level, but it could be a fourth Essica's Chariot, could be a third Sky Sovereign, could be a Fatal Push, who, who the hell cares? Could be a second Duress. Like, this could be a lot of things. But just, that's my slight tirade on Liliana not showing up as much as we thought it would in Pioneer when it was spoiled. And the last card in the deck we haven't talked about is Can't Stay Away. White, black, sorcery. Return target creature card with mana value 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains if this creature would die, exile it instead. And the spell has flashback for 3 black, white. This is a way to give you redundancy on your Grease Fangs. Your Seder Wayfinder can mill over Grease Fang, and then you can reanimate it. And then the reanimated Grease Fang reanimates a Parhelion, and you're in business. Going long, this is a 5 mana spell, so you don't even have to draw it. You can just mill past it, and eventually it'll turn into Grease Fang. You also get to look at this funny art of a cat eating a plate full of ghost food. This is a really cool, synergistic, mid-range combo deck. I will say that having played against it a number of times, I was not impressed. It seemed really easy to disrupt, but I'm going to try to do my best at, at being the bad guy here and attacking with Parhelion. Let's go do this thing. I'm on the draw in... Round number one, I have two lands that can cast Seder Wayfinder that can find land number three for Grease Fang. I got two boats in my hand. No way to dump them currently, but let's try to find some. We have a red-green pathway on the green side deploying Llanowar Elves. Okay, there's white. I'm going to play Ancient or Overgrown Tomb tapped. My other two lands come into play untapped and pain-free, and I'm just going to rock out with that. Werewolf Pack Leader. When this attacks, if you attack with creatures total power 6 or greater, draw a card. And for 4 mana, it can be a base power and toughness 5-3. Got it. Okay, playing the Concealed Courtyard will give up that I'm Grease Fang, but so does Seder Wayfinder. There's no information being hidden here. Oof. Didn't hit. I'll grab another Concealed Courtyard. And now i got to figure out how to get ahead in this game. I can chump block with Seder Wayfinder and then can't stay away it, which gives me another blast at the graveyard. This gains trample starting next turn. I will fire off a block. Another Wayfinder from hand. I think that's better than can't staying away the one in the graveyard. But I may need to recur this thing at some point. Still just whiffing my face off. On these, uh, on these mills. I'm spending time, though, hitting my land drops, moving ahead slowly. Oh, you also have the boat in your deck? Okay. Well, my creature's dead. Uh, if I draw Thoughtseize, I can Thoughtseize myself and get a Parhelion hit in. Or I could draw a third Grease Fang. Exactly what I wanted. I'm going to can't stay away one of the satyrs here. Wait, black. Come back. I finally found an Essica's Chariot. I guess I'll put Takanuma in my hand. Does this matter? I don't know. Uh, that's in my hand. The Concealed Courtyard is always tapped, so I'll deploy that one now. I think the uh, Skyship has sailed here on this game. 
they're going to start drawing cards from pack leader. They can also pump pack leader. Okay, decided to attack with the Llanowar Elves instead of buffing pack leader. That gives them, leaves mana up to cast a different spell. I'm at four, jeez. Okay. And, uh, we are just dead to the Sky Sovereign. All right, so, uh, there's the deck's fail rate. Just, uh, milled over 10 cards that game and never found a boat. Fatal Push looks relevant here. The green aggro deck, there is some a red splash of some variety. Sky Sovereign seems good. I don't know that I need Duress in this matchup. Thoughtseize myself would have been good at a variety of situations. Witherbloom Command would have killed a Llanowar Elf. Can't stay away is good. Liliana seems pretty awful in this matchup. This is where the unfamiliarity with Pioneer is really going to show up. I don't know what I'm supposed to be boarding out here. Uh, do I switch a Parhelion for a Sky Sovereign or switch a Chariot for Sky Sovereign and keep my vote count the same? Do they have Graveyard Hate? Should I chop a Can't Stay Away? But Can't Stay Away is Redundant Grease Fangs, where last game I was blessed with uh, too many Grease Fangs. One of the other sides of the fail rate is not having enough. I could also not play Abrupt Decay and just focus on speed, which would give me back my Thoughtseize and my Informant. I'm going to try this on the play. I have my Fatal Pushes and Witherbloom Commands and all the, the Sky Sovereigns. Try it. Okay, I'm going to keep the crap out of this hand. This kills Llanowar Elves on curve and starts the self mill. I'm going to start on a tap Temple Garden, save my life points. Our Plusen Forest and Llanowar Elves. Not long for this world. Blooming Marsh and Witherbloom Command. Cast with target player Mills 3. And target creature gets minus 3, minus 1. Mill myself, target you. Kill your elf. Hit a courtyard and did not hit a boat. Nothing to reanimate yet. Maybe it'll play another land or elf for me. And leading on Carpluzen Forest uh, tells me that their mana base needs some help. I had to play Besejo as a land. I'm going to Wither Bloom another one of these. Air player mills three, minus three, minus one a creature. Mill myself and target. I'll target Lana or Elves on principle. They are the same card. I'm just goofing. Okay, still no signs of, of life in my graveyard. Oh, you have Essex Chariot. That's cheating. We had a deal. I'm the one who does this. Okay, I can Wayfinder and Rafine's Informant this turn. Gonna Wayfinder first, I guess. Not sure if this matters, but this is what I'm doing. Okay, hit three boats into the graveyard now. Let's see if it, I've done it in time. Rushland, Rafine's Informant. I guess if I had Rafine's Informant at first, maybe I draw Fatal Push or something. I don't know if that matters. I'm actually gonna keep this Sky Sovereign in my hand. Discard Concealed Courtyard. I mean, I'm at five next turn, five mana. I can just cast this thing if that's the right thing to do. Like, I don't know if they're gonna format script me or some shit this turn. Art's Desire, okay. Not worried about that. Love Struck Beast, okay. I'm gonna get, oh, give red mana up. Strangles a Sorcery. Don't know that there's a single Single red spell that kills in X3 that they might have. Okay, I drew my own Essica's Chariot. Is Parhelion better? I mean, Parhelion leaves by, behind a bunch of angels, which will impact the board more than more than Sky Sovereign will. Okay, they're just scooping to Grease Fang. Okay. Uh, it took two turns longer than I wanted to mill over one of my things there, but uh, we did it. It was good enough when it hit. Yeah, all my removals in, uh, except for Liliana, which is not really removal. Abrupt Decay and Terra Sunder. Uh, I, I guess Abrupt Decay is removal. Off curve like this. Is this where I want to be? Do I just want to be trying to go fast? I think I just want to try to go fast. Got to bet on my goldfish. All right, I can salvage here. 
and I have the can't stay away. If salvage hits, we're in business on turn three. There of the Hydra go. Interesting. All right. Uh oh well, I in the previous games I've been leading on overgrown tomb and letting my fast lands be fast lands later. I think I'm gonna do it the opposite here because overgrown tomb can always come into play untapped, and because I have three fast lands, I'm actually set up all my, my first three land drops are spoken for. Fatal push, JK. Don't have it. Be great though. Concealed courtyard and pass the turn. Grizzly salvage is an instant. Try to put it all together in one shot here. Reckless storm seeker. Gain new combat on your turn. Target creature gets plus one plus zero oh, and gains haste. Uh, so they're attacking for six already, and drawing cards with back leader. That's impressive. Okay. Um, it's time for Grizzly salvage to find me grease fang and a boat. All right, Grizzly, make it happen. Green black. Let it rip. Uh, Grease Fang in a boat. We did it, team. Grease Fang to my hand. Our healing under the graveyard. Blooming Marsh. Grease Fang. And go to Parhelion on town. Alright, so I gotta make sure to do this correctly. This comes into play pre-combat. Now I have to crew it before combat. It doesn't just do what you want it to automatically. And here comes Gigantic Crush of Damage. Leaving two four fours in its wake. All right, not bad. Then Parhelion returns to my hand, where I can Rafine's Informant in a way, and then refire next turn. Okay, the first two games of straight up fail rate, followed by awkward, but eventually got there, balanced out by the turn three Goldfish. And there's the power of this deck. I, I see the appeal now. Let's roll. You come here to level up at Magic. To level up as a software engineer, check out the new YouTube series Dev Better, hosted by the founder of 7 Factor Software and Magic player, Jeremy Duvall. 7 Factor's small teams of high-performing engineers build custom mobile apps, APIs, and highly scalable systems for Fortune 500 companies and ambitious startups with great ideas. If you'd like to hire 7 Factor, or maybe join their team, contact them through their website at 7factor.io. And don't forget to subscribe to 7 Factor's YouTube for every episode of Dev Better. It's round two. I'm on the draw. No green mana in this hand, but I have Rafine's Informant. I'm going to keep. Oh, we're against Ari Zax, who is a known mono green sicko. If I draw the green, I can command and maybe get something going here. But uh, opponent is going for, going for the big ramps. Green? Not green. Okay, Rafine's Informant is the play. Knive, I can discard one of my Grease Fangs. I can bring that back later if I need it. Just can't stay away. I did find the Witherbloom Command, so we are starting to fall behind on that. Yep, just nick those stuff happening here. Storm the Festival, yep. And Cavalier of Thorns and Lovestruck Beast that also draw two cards because of Kiora. Cool, 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 cool. These Witherbloom Commands just insulting me. Can I win this game? Is it even winnable? And I guess I'll Temple Garden and mill myself for three and kill one of the elves. I have low hope for this, but not nothing. This puts more cards in the graveyard than Rafine's Informant does. Grown Tomb to my hand. There is an Essica's Chariot in the graveyard, but uh, not helpful. It's not the big one I needed. Old Growth Troll draws a card. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Nick those good for 10 right now. And are good for 11 now. Yora still chilling. Opponent's got over 20 mana right now. Another Oath of Nyssa. The Land War Elves in the hand. And I guess... Okay, Old Growth Troll is a redraw. I say they're almost out of gas here. Played Troll, drew a card. Alright. Uh, they either found something or they're firing up Lair of the Hydra. The Trample. Alright, Storm the Festival from the Graveyard. All these things. Legal plays. Horrible, horrible for me. Arn and Kiora. I believe this is infinite. I'll just demonstrate for content in what fashion. Get the, the Cauldron here. Chain Veil. That works too. Activate all your Planeswalkers again. And then Karn can get the 
the cauldron, which gets Karn and Kiora back from the graveyard. Then you can cast both and just loop infinitely. Yep. Pestilent Cauldron exiles itself. So you can get it with the next Karn, and we're out of here. Splat. A Fatal Push comes in. Die Sovereign comes in. And this is a deck with Planeswalkers. Liliana, once again, embarrassing. And... I guess I just chase the goldfish again. Same thing as last round. Okay, I have Witherbloom commands this time. I have turn three Grease Fang. Got to get a, a boat in my graveyard somehow. Hope this command just hits Barhelion and we can goldfish straight to game three. Elvish Mystic. Opponent did not disappoint. Hasty target for a command. Okay, there is a Barhelion in the graveyard. Uh, they got to disrupt my graveyard this turn or. They're getting hit with a boat. Oath of Nyssa. On old growth troll. That's not it. Oath of Nyssa number two. On Nicol Bolas, God Pharaoh. Or Dragon God. Different God. Hey, okay, rats off to you. Here's Great Saying. Back the boat. Crew the boat. And we got a tor turn three goldfish. <laughs> Took turns exchanging goldfishes there. That just seems like the way to win the game, more than bringing in these Abrupt Decays and Terra Sunders and trying to like fight their Planeswalkers or their creatures. Just execute your plan. What I'm going to try to do. Same deck. Imagine Decay and a Sunder are for like Unlicensed Hearse and Rest in Peace. Just real bangers like that. I'll keep this one. It doesn't have the Witherbloom command. We're also on the draw where command is a lot worse. It'll push, it'll push. Okay, Overgrown Tomb tapped. I can salvage looking for the Fang and the Parhelion. Willow Haven, Oath of Nyssa, Old Growth Troll, and Second Oath. Turn the Great Creator. They probably have Graveyard Hate in their sideboard they can wish for with that and just be stable. Oh, Karn also turns off Crewing. Oh, shit. Yeah, we can't actually beat this card. <laughs> Shit. Yes, I needed Terra Sunder. Yep. Did not even occur to me until right in this moment that crew is the activated ability of an artifact. How do we even win? I guess I needed to play Rafine's Informant. Green Black. I'll put Rafine's Informant in my hand. I do have other Sky Sovereigns. I could just play Sky Sovereign at some point. Ah, Fatal Push. A little late to the party, but I've seen worse cards in my life. Okay, Informant, let's go. Informant, Chariot does leave two twos behind. Uh, we're just in full scrappy crappy mode here. I'm going to discard Zader Wayfinder. I think the plus one counter is relevant. And then I'm going to push Mystic. Might as well, I don't know. It slows down mana at least. Tell me that infinite combo growth troll which nets mana or the festival okay we're done we're done both of nissa off the the store in the festival and an elvish mystic pretty low impact all things considered one card left in hand and it's nick those but there is an active karn in play and it's kind of out of gas but you're never that far out of gas with karn can't stay away that is not helpful to me Pay two life to play Chariot. Let me just get these cats into play at least. And passing the turn. Okay, they're making big mana. Something's going to come out of Karn. Or they can flashback Storm the Festival as well. Plenty of horrible things are happening to me here. I think the whiff twice. Oh no. All right. All right. I'm good. I'm good. I was hanging on by uh, women of prayer there anyway. And the Cavalier is just no chance. Let me just check my sideboard real quick. Uh, maybe I'm supposed to have duresses in against this matchup to collapse the Planeswalkers or Eris under for a chance to remove Karn at instant speed. That was rough though. Uh, Karn just shutting down the deck on its own while also presenting a win condition. Not a good place to be. This match was deeply unsatisfying. Uh, the player on the play just ran over the player on the draw both times, and I didn't care for that. On to the next round. This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build magic decks online. 
Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including Legacy and every other format you'll see on this channel. They have multiple customizations so you can view your deck how you want. Text view, stacks, grid, custom grouping by type, subtype, color, light mode, dark mode. However you want to see your deck, they can provide it for you. My favorite feature is you can choose your set printing, make the deck look exactly how you want it to. The deck screen features expandable sections that show you what tokens your deck makes, your recent change history to the deck, stats about mana curve and opening hand distribution, mana cost distribution. You can deal out sample hands and even play test the deck. Island Ponder. You know I'm keeping this one. This site has everything. Follow me on moxfield.com to keep up with decks I'm playing for the channel and what I'm up to in paper. I'll see you there. On the draw for round three, and I think we got a mulligan here. This hand just doesn't do anything. Yeah, send it. Okay, first appearance of Thoughtseize in this league. I'm going to keep my hand. And I think I want to keep Parhelion. I'll send this Overgrown to him. Caress and Thoughtseize. Let's try to be disruptive a little bit here. Storm Carve Coast. I think I lead on Duress. So I can Thoughtseize myself. For this Barhelion at some point if I need to. And is it is known for being a spell deck anyway. Hope I hit here. Just show me like seven unbeatable creatures. Okay, Arc Light Phoenix, Pieces of the Puzzle, Treasure Cruise, Fiery Impulse, Opt. It is Phoenix. Pieces pretty stacked. I'm gonna take Treasure Cruise though. That card sucks ass. Time to get something going. Fiery Justice is the card that I was thinking of last round uh, that can take out a Grease Fang for one mana if they have two spells in their graveyard. I'm going to Thought Seize the pieces of the puzzle. That card's just really good and undoes so much of what I've done with my discard spells already. Opt in response. Go for it. Bottom the Opt card. Wow, they found a Spell Pierce. That's cheating. All right, well, my pieces are going to get puzzled here. Oh, thing in the ice. Sure. Uh oh. Parhelion 2, handful of Parhelions. I need a Rafine's Informant. I'll take that Liliana also. Oh, they drew their land. They missed their land drop last turn. Get pieces of the puzzle here. They only got a Fiery Impulse off it, but they did bin a Phoenix. This is at least a card I can cast. Oh, do I even want to cast this? Hold on. This gives them two targets for Fiery Impulse, and they can, if they have one other blue spell, I guess if they're spewing off fiery impulses, those are not going to be pointed at Grease Fang later. I don't know. I don't like this, but here it is. They could double impulse my chariot. Might be even better. Wayfinder. Okay. Um, do I want to find the way for combat? I think so. Because if the way finds Grease Fang, I can, can't stay away it. Okay, that wasn't great. A Blooming Marsh and Overgrown Tomb are the same thing here because they're both coming into play tapped. If I crew the Chariot, they can double impulse it. And then the... What happens if I attack with just the two cats instead? Whatever. I mean, my plan is to Grease Fang them eventually. I'll give them the, the double now. Oh, Lightning Axe. Yeah, that's even better. And then they can uh, zap both of my... That puts the Phoenix in the graveyard. They can attack me for 7, 13 next turn if they have a 1-mana blue spell. And they still have the Fiery Impulses for the Grease Fang. This is what I was talking about in the deck deck of when I've played against Grease Fang. It's been kind of easy to disrupt. Okay, 4 mana for my opponent. Another Wayfinder. I mean, I know they can flip thing in the ice here. Do I just lean into it or make axe and then try to do something post-combat? But they'll still have their impulses. All right. Yes, I'll try to do something pre-combat. Uh, hit three lands and a grizzly salvage. Good stuff. I'm going to be casting Parhelion soon. I guess I will simply attack with my three creatures that can attack. Deal three damage to my opponent unless they want to spew off and flip thing. Okay, opponents at 17. Yeah, they're sitting on these impulses, which makes sense. Uh, if at some point they'll be able to one-shot me, 
with phoenixes and stuff and just keeping two instants in your hand against the deck that tries to win with creatures with thing in the ice threatening to flip makes sense as well okay they just started to tap four mana and change their mind i wonder if there's a phoenix in their hand with her bloom command what do you do for me not much uh all right all wither bloom command target player mills three that's me and grain and gain green black i'll put temple garden in my hand and i still have not seen a grease fang i am 24 cards into my library there's a sky sovereign in the graveyard now and i milled over a uh, can't stay away at some point if a creature ever dies i'll be able to bring it back Really, my plan at this point is to poke them with three and four point chunks until they're bleeding out and need to fire off some of these spells, flip the thing, and then unlock the game for me. Okay, I'll tag you for four. You know, I was joking, but I'm one man away from casting Parhelion now. Not sure if I'll ever be able to crew it, but I could put this thing on the stack. Time to make a move. Pieces of the puzzle. Well, this will guarantee that thing can flip. Uh, they milled over another phoenix with this. There's three now. They have a pieces to consider and a chart, of course. They're probably going to make a move here. So consider if it misses on a land, then they'd be giving me a turn with, with Grease Fang available. Awoken Horror is Awoken. The satyrs are back in my hand, which is actually great. They don't have a land. They'll have a difficult choice to make. They are at one shot from Parhelion range. Treasure Cruise, okay. That uh will likely find the red source. Shit. Found the red source. Too easy. Can't stay away is a sorcery, so I can't like spam two of them. Here come the phoenixes. Uh, right in the phoenix. Leaving one back to block. Like a coward. Or like a smart person. It doesn't change the clock at all. That was a perfectly fine decision to make. Wayfinder still has not seen a Grease Fang. Play the other one, I guess. Wayfinder. Okay, we found a Grease Fang. It only took 28 cards. Oh, excuse me. 33 cards. I was counting from the wrong direction. Only took 33 cards. Rushland can't stay away. I mean, I'll make you do it, I guess. Begin combat. And we're dead. Yeah, you should let me go into combat here. Okay, here we go. We go into combat, which means I get to bring something back. I guess I'll target Sky Sovereign, not that it matters. Because Grease Fang's going to die here. I don't get to crew the boat. Sky Sovereign can take out a Phoenix and then return to my hand. I can block Awoken Horror, go to one, and then still be dead. Because they have a fi second fire impulse still chill in. They can draw a zillion cards between pieces and chart, of course. Uh, they could also just get this Phoenix back pre combat. One, two, three, four, five, six, which is the amount of mana they have. Yeah, they're doing fine. Chart, of course, pre combat. Well, they, f they had their other Phoenix. All right, all right. Yeah, we're good. We're good. I believe you. Yeah, that was a solid uh, Grease Fang fail rate situation. Graveyard Hate. Unlicensed Hearse. Graveyard Trespasser. Get in. Fatal Push is good against Thing in the Ice. Duress is good against all of the spells in their deck. Emio Safekeeping. Target Permanent gains Hexproof and Indestructible until end of turn. They're a deck full of Burn. Do I want to lean in on Grease Fang or use my Duresses to, to make that not the case anymore? Witherbloom Command doesn't seem very good in this matchup. It doesn't it only mills. It doesn't actually do anything else. Because they don't have any really targetable creatures with it. Liliana might actually be good here. The rarely seen Liliana's good. And stay away seems important for redundancy on the Grease Fangs. Wayfinder and Salvage do the most. That kind of just leaves Boats and Rafine's Informant as things to cut. I have four more spots of things I want to bring in. Rafine's Informant. I could cut a chariot, I guess. I don't know if I'm supposed to like get fair and play to the board because I can't count on Grace Fang. Yeah, maybe cut a Parhelion's better than cutting a chariot. Or Sky Sovereign is worse than both of those. And I guess I'll cut one more informant. 
of the cards I've made room for. Do it. Always open to constructive, well-meaning criticism from Pioneer experts. Okay, uh, I'll keep this hand. It needs an enabler, but it has the Grease Fang. I do have to take damage from my lands. Get off the ground. Dress you. There is a Phoenix in the hand. Fiery Impulse, Spike Field Hazard, Opt. I'm going to take Opt. Not going to let this be easy on you. Invents shocked it in. Okay. Thoughtseize and Duress. I'll Duress you again. I'm going to take the, the Burn Spell this time. Fiery Impulse. Oh, Lightning Axe. No, I'm taking that. That discards the Phoenix, too. And I'll play Temple Garden. It's going to take another turn to Thoughtseize through the Impulse anyway. That's why I'm not in a hurry to Thoughtseize them. Blooming Marsh right on time. I think I want to save Thoughtseize for when I'm going to go for it. really like to see a thing in the ice. Here's Is a Charm. Draw two, discard two. Discarded two Arclight Phoenixes. Found another one in the meantime. At least one of their spells in their hand are currently uncastable. Okay, thing in the ice, good deal. My fatal push technology has paid off at last. Playing around spell pierce even. Graveyard Trespasser, what's up? Okay, I'm gonna thought seize my opponent and then trespass them. Thought seize you. I'm gonna take thing in the ice. Or they could lose their whole hand. Do I care about thing in the ice from this juncture? I and mean, if they find a uh, treasure cruise, they're right back in it. Fiery Impulse can kill Graveyard Trespasser, though, just straight up. Yeah, I'm taking the Impulse. I get to at least eat a Phoenix here. That'll Arclight Phoenix get it out. Their hand is Thing and Spike Field Hazard right now. Pieces of the puzzle, that was a good draw. Get Consider and Lightning Axe. Or they didn't get Lightning Axe. Stay away. Uh, that'll be good someday, maybe. Exile that other Phoenix. Get out. Do I want to put Grease Fang into play just as a creature, or go to Nighttime? Nighttime is still Ward Discard a card, but it's 4-4, four, four, so it's bigger. I'll just let it get bigger. If they have uh, Anger of the Gods or something, I want a, a larger creature in play. Being in the Ice, consider... It'll go straight back to Daytime. I was safe for one turn. Means Informant. Okay. I'll attack first. Exile a thing in the ice. I, that at least gains me a life. Don't know if it matters much. They've been holding the spike field hazard forever. Let's uh let's flush it out, I guess. Okay, they let me connive. I'm gonna discard Grease Fang. So I can can't stay it away next turn. And dump some creatures out now. And unlicensed turch, which uh hilariously does do something if I Grease Fang it into play against this deck. Okay, pass a turn. Unfortunately, I milled a second Can't Stay Away, which shows them that I do have that. Get access to Grease Fang. Here's the Treasure Cruise we were worried about. Always worried about that one. Can't Stay Away can bring back Trespasser, as long as it doesn't get Anger the Godded. Two of their Phoenixes and two of their Thing in the Ice is already in exile. This thing looks like it's ready to flip now. If Spikefield Hazard in hand still, at the very least, they can't still do better than that. And okay, my squad's back in my hand. Did you find another Phoenix to discard to this chart? Drawn six cards this turn. All right, I missed on a Phoenix. Good deal. Okay, here's Grease Fang, which isn't even good. I guess I should Wayfinder first if I hit a big one for Grease Fang. Still didn't hit a big one. Disappointing stuff. Yeah, I guess it's just the Trespasser coming back. Uh, I can exile a creature from my own graveyard to gain a life. It's only Grease Fang there. I'm just going to exile a spell from theirs. They do use their graveyard a little bit for non-Phoenix things. I don't know that I can overcome their current velocity. But it's not nothing. Another treasure cruise. Totally normal magic card. Oh, that's bad. Brotherhood's End. It's not Anger of the Gods, so things aren't in exile. I am at three life against a deck full of three power haste creatures, though. 
Okay. Do I think there's any universe where they let me have bang? That I hope they sequence wrong, I guess. Grizzly salvage, go. And we did not find a boat worth putting in. Cool. I guess I'll take the Seder Wayfinder. And I'm going to Rafine's Informant first. If I find Fatal Push, that's at least something I can do. Hey! <laughs> I drew Fatal Push. I just have to uh, somehow navigate their handful of spells. See if they kill my Informant in the end step. All they have to do is cast a Phoenix, and I'm in bad shape. This is of the puzzle. Oh, well. This isn't getting better. I'll Fatal Push now, and hope that I'm not dead. Okay, that worked. Hit a Phoenix, shit. And we know they have multiple spells they can cast. Uh, the pain of being at exactly three life. Okay, um, that was a good time. Uh, my graveyard hate started. I did get two of the Phoenixes. The, the second thing in the ice stuck. Maybe I am supposed to have Abrupt Decays in. Just out of respect for Thing. Maybe I'm supposed to have Safekeeping in to try to shove the degree spank through there's a number of different ways this matchup could have gone and definitely format experience would be worth a lot in those cases grease fang experts grease fang defenders let us know in the comments how you board against is it phoenix i'm going on to the next round though we're a few rounds into the video thanks for sticking with me friendly reminder that if you're still here and having fun smash that subscribe button and if you want to play what I'm playing, you can use my affiliate link for TCG Player to support the channel while you shop for cards, and you can try any deck anytime with a cardhoarder.com loan account for Magic Online. All these links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. I'm on the play, finally, and I have turn 2 Seder, and I can't stay away that could hit Grease Fang if I mill one. Playing against a Gigantha strategy. I don't know what that means in Pioneer. I can tell you every modern deck right now that plays Gigantha, but out of the loop in this one. I'm going to play Overgrown Tomb tapped. And pass the turn. Rushland. Generous Visitor. What the hell is this? Is this like a Bogle deck? Is that a thing in this format? Okay, let's hope this is a deck we can just dumpster. They're on a Malt of 5. I hit a Sky Sovereign. Unfortunately, I also milled two Thought Seasons, which would have been helpful. There is a boat in my graveyard if I find a Grease Fang. Amigawa Neon Dynasty Draft All-Star Generous Visitor is in play. Okay, Seder Wayfinder is actually great. That gives me another spin. Find a Grease Fang. Not a Grease Fang. There is a Rafine's Informant. I attack with one of these Satyrs. There is a Instant Speed Enchantment Pioneer for one mana. I don't know what it is. There's probably some draft common. Okay. They multi five and kept a one lander, it missed their land drop, then found the other land. So they're in business, whatever business is. Light pause. Okay. That makes sense. That is a self contained engine. Means informant. Okay. I'm going to inform and hope I draw a Grease Fang that I can discard immediately and go nuts. Hey. Okay. There's Grease Fang. We did it. Shock in my white source, regrow Grease Fang, or reanimate Grease Fang, better than regrowth. And opponent's done. Sky Sovereign wipes their whole squad here, and we're into the sideboard. Okay, this is a Light Pause Enchantress Ultron deck. Terra Sunder, Abrupt Decay, Fatal Push, all definitely coming in. Suspect Duress would be good. Uh, rip. Liliana seems good too. Now what do I board out? Witherbloom Command might not be good enough on the draw, but it does destroy auras. Okay. Witherbloom Command probably good. All right, fine. Liliana's out. Chariot's out. Maybe I don't actually have room for all these duresses. A Rafine's Informant? I can't stay away? Uh, this is a, an enchantment deck. Are they going to be rest in piecing me? Maybe I'll back off of Can't Stay Away a little bit and shave a Witherbloom command. I am bringing in six removal spells. Okay. I'm going to try it like this. I, I only conceptually know what my opponent's stuck doing, not specifically. 
This hand seems pretty great, though. I'll keep. I want to keep seven this time. We're in danger. Well, garden tapped. Show me your thoughts. Put a light pause in the graveyard, then their hand doesn't do anything. Aerial armor to rest in peace. Um, I'm going to take a rest in peace because I can Witherbloom command the other. Or abrupt decay the other. Brushland, here comes the rest in peace. Okay. The mill is above the disc, the destroy on this card, and I don't think that would have made. That would even matter if it was the other way, so I might use Abrupt Decay here instead of Command. Yeah, I'm just going to play Blooming Marsh. Pass the turn. If they play a creature and immediately Ethereal Armor it, the Command can take the Ethereal Armor if nothing else comes together. Oh, Drew Light Paws. Best possible. Okay, whenever in an Whenever an aura enters the battlefield under your control, if you cast it, you may search your library for an aura card with mana value less than or equal to that aura. And with a different name than each aura you control, put the card onto the battlefield attached to light paws. I assume it's going to be some protection aura. Okay. I can rest in peace. I'm just going to get my two for one here that also blanks their whole deck. I was about to say, I do have creatures I can just cast and stuff. Uh, a Sicka's Chariot on the list. And do I thought sees the last card in their hand? I think I'm just going to Whittler Bloom Command and drain them. Target player loses two life, destroy target thing. Destroy rest in peace, you lose two life. Not in a big hurry to thought sees here. I know one of their cards in hand is a land. And they have a bunch of auras in their deck that they can't equip to stuff. Just put Jaggy in hand. Is a reasonable thing to do. Okay, I know they can Jeggy next turn. Can I beat a 5 5 creature? Um, I'll take a turn off to Thoughtseize. Oh, Light Paws and Jeggy, huh? I think I'm more likely to beat Light Paws. Okay. Let's see what we got here Paradise Druid. That creature is hexproof when it's untapped. And Light Paws. Okay, land off the top. Onan is Hellbent. Give me that untapped land for Sky Sovereign. We end the game on the spot. Oh yeah, big boat action. This kills light paws. The cats can crew Sky Sovereign next turn and just light them up. Audacity. Okay. Uh, when Audacity goes to the graveyard, you draw a card. Okay. Whatever. One, two, three, four. Chariot. Chariot crew the boat. I can attack my opponent for six. Can't deal damage to their thing, but I'll take one third of their life points as a consolation prize. A break coronet, not in this format. Also can't go into Gigantha deck. That's lucky. All that glitters, okay. That makes that pretty big, but still just dies. This guy sovereign. Still can't attack. Okay, Rafine's Informant versus Grizzly Salvage. Rafine's Informant can crew Sky Sovereign. Okay, I'll just do that. Loot discarding Parhelion. Oh, I'm going to Grizzly Salvage now. Uh, if they... Or, no, I... That doesn't do anything. I need it to. Okay. Crew. Boat. I'll crew the Chariot also. They don't have First Strike over there. And trade. Three for one here. They want to block. It's all good. And they do want to trade. Audacity draws a card. That's fine. And I am going to Salvage now. As my lands all enter the battlefield tapped or hurt me when they enter, so get that out of the way. The opponent has two cards in their hand to defeat my board of. Even if it's like Stony Silence and Rest in Peace, that's not enough. I don't even know if Stony Silence made the cut into Pioneer. I don't think it did. Oh, SRAM. Okay, we got a game. I'm excited now. I thought for sure it was over, but this is a card that can do stuff. Probably not enough stuff. But that was exciting while it lasted. That was a pretty good last two cards in your hand. Okay, on to the final round. Let's go. For the absolute best Magic the Gathering apparel on the market, check out the link in the video description to coalesceapparel.shop and be sure to use the code BOSHENROLL for 10% off when you check out. I'm on the play with a Sketcher. With two lands, we're just common, but I don't think I keep this with one. I'm going to mulligan this. Almost all set up. Okay, here's a similar hand. 
I'm in for this. I'm going to bottom the probably an overgrown tomb. I mean, basic swamp does what I needed to here, right? Yeah, does what I needed to without hurting me. Deal. Got two Witherbloom commands to impact the board and fill up my graveyard, try to hit my land drop, get their team. Can't stay away. All right. Witherbloom's just going to have to be mill and drain. Looking for a white source and a boat. Get a green source and a boat. Okay. Better than nothing. We did hit something. I know the matchup now. Play an X1. 1 3. That's the opposite of what I wanted. Uh oh. Now we're in some trouble. I'm going to command first. And mill 3 and drain again. Playing against Selesnia Angels. On white source. Didn't hit a white source. Just. Milled three. Yeah, whiffed on the white source. We had the boat and the, the Grease Fang this time, but didn't cast the payoff. Tough break. White source? All right, this could be a white source still. Main phase in it. A concealed courtyards. We got some tapped white sources. Better than nothing. Okay, we can boat next turn. They're going into a collected company levels of mana now. They did nothing on three. And I drew Temple Garden. That's interesting. That makes me want a Rafine's Informant first. Make it look like I don't have Grease Fang. And discard Sky Sovereign either way. Oh, Perhelion's better. I discard Perhelion. And let's go for Grease Fang. It's happening a couple turns later than I would have liked, but we're in business here. I'm going to go for Perhelion. I can just cast Sky Sovereign next turn. Not remove my Grease Fang. Our Helion's awake. We get into combat. All right, we're attacking. Go. Luckily, this is a new card. Angels enter the battlefield under your control. I just put two angels into play myself. Here's the Coco. We knew this was happening. Bishop of Wings and Resplendent. Angel. Bishop, you gain four when you get an angel. And if you've gained five or more life. Okay. They're not in the Resplendent Angel territory. They're taking the, the full brunt of Parhelion here. And I pass the turn with a smaller number of angels in play than they have. If they can just spam Cocos now, they could overwhelm my flying presence. Aya's Reconstruction. Look at the top seven cards of your library. Put up to X artifacts or creature cards with mana value three or less from them. Onto the battlefield, the rest on the bottom in a random order. X equals two, and they did hit two things. Oh, because you look at seven all the time. Just am I misunderstanding this card? Oh, put up to X artifact creatures, mana value three or less. Okay, you can put that many in no matter what. All right, got it. Well, they're going off over there. They have an enormous number of giant angel creatures and try to grisly salvage my way out of this. I guess I'm going to have to. Rafine Black, Rafine's Lieutenant, or Informant, Rafine's Lieutenant. Uh, Rafine's Informant puts Parhelion back in the graveyard at the very least. Okay. Rafine, inform me. Guard Parhelion again. And I'll go to combat and return this Parhelion. Through it. Okay, they have a number of enormous flying creatures. I guess all I can do is attack, though. Here they come. Getting completely outmuscled here. Yeah, they have four creatures that are all bigger than all my angels. <laughs> that was disgusting. I didn't even look because I didn't have another plan, but yeah, there's that. I needed to do that two turns earlier than I did. Missing on that white source, like I could have... I had the turn three Sky Sovereign set up. It just did not deliver because it wasn't there. Fatal push. Kills their creatures. Duress can clear their big payoffs, but so does Thoughtseize, which also hits the creatures, so I'm not going to... Specifically, go after that. Where the Bloom Command actually pretty bad. Doesn't kill anything in their deck. They could conceivably have rest in peace. I did just look at the metagame and the the top decks, or at least the most recent successful decks in this archetype did not play rest in peace. One of them has Lion Sash. I'm looking at it right now. That card's annoying. You can bring in Abrupt Decays. Those hit Lion Sash or Rest in Peace, and also. Angels. Yeah, this looks reasonable. Got my unreliable 
removal spell for four reliable ones. I'll be mulliganing this hand with only Baseju for mana. Uh, this one has the juice. I'm going to keep it. I think I'm going to bottom can't stay away. Because I already have the Grease Fang. And Parhelion in my hand makes Rafine's Informant a banger. Eat on Temple Garden and send it. I need this Grizzly Salvage to give me the goods. Okay, cool. Now I have Abrupt Decay. If they play Rest in Peace this turn instead of doing anything else, I can clear that. Truthful Valkyrie. Okay. Kill that whenever. But if Grizzly Salvage pays me out here, come on, you dick. Well, I guess I'm taking Rafine's Informant to invest in the Arhelion that's in my hand. Okay, Thoughtseize, good news. I can check their hand for interaction or payoffs. Bishop of Wings, Yada Coco. Yada's fine. Valkyrie is when another angel enters the battlefield, put a plus one counter on it, so that'll be 2 4 next turn. I'm taking the Coco. Or I can't take that Besaju, that's a shame. Big Collecting Company and Rafine's Informant. Loot away Parhelion. They overgrown farmland does come into play untapped. They can decide if they want to add to their board or shields up against Grease Fang. Or Giada does both. Shit. Yeah, she's a legend. Yep, that reduces the cost of Baseju. And Tough Beats, missing on that one turn. Gonna cost me everything. Gonna hope they mess up. I don't know. If they play Bishop instead. There's the farmland. Play Bishop. Play Bishop. Okay, they played Bishop. That means they can't besage me this turn. It means we're in business. Grease Fang, let's go. Grease Fang's in. Arhelion is in. Brew it. And go to combat. Don't need to attack with Informant. Because there's a 1-4 on defense over there. Okay, they get their big hit here. And next turn they can play Giada, gain 4 life. Pump the Youthful Valkyrie. I have Abrupt Decay, and if I draw any discard spell, we get to go again. Now they're showing Besaju, but I have Abrupt Decay. If I draw a Rafine's Informant here, or I could Thoughtseize myself, those are both great hits. Okay. And also just go to combat. I kill Giada. Or am I more worried about Youthful Valkyrie? Every other angel enters with a battlefield with a plus one counter equal to the number of angels you already control. Fuck that. Could just attack, see what they want to do about it. Chariot's exciting, but uh, knowing they have the Baseju and Grease Fang doesn't give these haste or anything. I'm gonna go to combat. You have a lot of power and toughness. If they try to double block Grease Fang, I can get a blowout with Abrupt Decay. Chump blocking with Giada, that's weird. Okay. An Angel died, so they get a 1 1. And uh, whatever. Uh, Giada's gone, which is the card I was worried about holding up Abrupt Decay for, so I'll play the Chariot. I know they have Besaju, but I'll take the land. It's fine. Get my cats. Not Besaju me. Well, I guess you, you wouldn't now because it would come back from Grease Fang next turn. Alright, cool. Got under their engine. Is this a bigger Sky Sovereign matchup than I originally gave it credit for? If they get ahead of Sky Sovereign, it just doesn't matter. But if I can, I think maybe I just need to max out my density of Grace Fang hits because just having zero room to breathe in the matchup is pretty rough. I'm gonna cut a can't stay alive. Make room for that. Can't stay alive. <laughs> That's the opposite of what that card is. How many times have I said that this league? Probably a lot. Okay, I have Thoughtseize. Informant can dump the Sky Sovereign. Can't stay away if I find the other thing. They're the fang or any mill effect. I'm in business here. On it mold to six. An awkward little tap land. Ease your thoughts. Anything needle. Uh, that can stop crew abilities. They are activated abilities of an artifact. Yes. Okay, that's what Pithing Needle does. Gotta Overseer. Uh, I'm holding Bastaju. I'm not super worried about. I'm gonna take the Giada. He taps for mana and makes their proactive plan better. There's the planes, here's the pithing needle. Are we guessing? 
Alien 2. Sky Sovereign's the one that I have. Shock this in, and I'm going to inform my opponent that I have Sky Sovereign. Scar the boat. Drawing Fatal Push was nice, too. They missed their land drop. We take those. I'm not too proud. I'm going to play another informant. And, oh, I actually want that Seder. Means I'll discard this garden. Play my land tapped and attack for three. A satyr, if it mills over Grease Fang and hits a black source, is Die Sovereign next turn. Play the Overseer, that makes sense. That still trades with all my creatures, but it you care less if it dies and it hits you your land drop. Okay, I found my black source, that's locked. Now I just need to get a Grease Fang on this mill. Show me the Grease Fang. Grease Fang, Grease Fang. Oh, no Grease Fang. There isn't a Rafine's Informant, though. We can keep the party going. Okay. I'll attack with my two creatures. I don't want them hitting critical mass. Every angel in play matters. Can't stay away. Target Rafine's Informant. Knive. Dump a Parhelion. Not helpful because of the needle, but I'm at... I'm not at five mana because my land comes into play tapped. The Besaid Juice has been chilling the whole time. Could come up. Maybe it doesn't. Yada gets Fatal Pushed all day. A okay, Pithing Needle on my other card. I named Sky Sovereign or Chariot for this one. And I have all three of them in the graveyard. The whole squad's here. Just need a Grease Fang. Oh, named Besaju. Okay, that's clever. So their bet is that Arhelion is just so much better than everything else that it's worth turning off Besaju rather than turning off a different Maybe they're right. I don't know enough about modern to dispute it. I can flashback can't stay away on another informant next turn if I don't find a Grease Fang. We know they have a creature in their hand and they didn't play it, so I expect Collected Company here, which naturally Duress does not is too late to help me with. I can at least force the action pre-combat and see what they're working with. Duress you, yeah, Collected Company, uh-huh. Bishop of Wings and Righteous Valkyrie, both of which gain four life. I hit another Coco here. Nope, just two Resplendent Angels. We're fucked. I'm going to play Besaju and Flashback Can't Stay Alive on Rafine's Informant. Knive. Oh my god. 21 cards into my deck without looking at the picture on Grease Fang. And Resplendent Angel gains 7 life when it comes into play, 7 gets them over the threshold to make a 4-4 four, four angel, which gains them another 8 life in the end step. Yeah, their whole engine is online here. Shit to do about it. And all of that will turn on the Righteous Valkyrie to be the, the Lord. Grizzly Salvage. How about a Grease Fang? Grease Fang. Okay, I found Grease Fang. It is... Too late, I think, but I'm going to try. Here's Grace Fang. I'm going to get back Sky Sovereign. Sky Sovereign gets to poke twice here and hit. I think the Valkyrie's worse than the Resplendent Angel. Valkyrie, got to put six damage on that this turn. Crew, combat, back, kill the Valkyrie. Makes the whole squad smaller. Get a 1-1, one, one, because an angel died. I don't care if Sky Sovereign ends up in my hand or my graveyard. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Cost 6 to activate Resplendent Angel. For 35 life, they would not block this. There is no reason at all. And I'll play my land and pass the turn. Okay. Resplendent Angel's the last card in their hand. If they draw an untapped land, they can... Um, Resplendent Angel, which turns on the whole. Yep, there's a the land. Do they wanna hit me for six, seven, eight, nine? Uh, this is not lethal. Five, nine, ten. They can put me to two. Not in good shape here. Uh, it turns out they were right in their assessment that uh, turning off the Seju to keep Parhelion out of the game is better than the other option. Uh, they gain 5 life, which gives them another angel in the end step, which also triggers Bishop of Wings. Their life total is unsurmountable, and the flying 
creatures are not beatable either. Yes, I'll Seder. See if anything shakes loose. Don't know what would or could help me here. But it's certainly not Basic Swamp. Okay. I am super dead. I can cast Sky Sovereign, but not attack with it. I can bring back Essica's Chariot and make some cats, but that doesn't do anything. It's absolutely obliterated here. And those were five matches with Abzan Grease Fang. We saw both ends of the spectrum. The reason to play this deck and the reason not to play this deck are the explosive nature of it. When you do turn three a monster, the game is just over. And when you draw three Grease Fangs and have zero things to reanimate, or you have a stocked graveyard and don't find Grease Fang in your top 33 cards, hell, you know, get to stepping, kid. The match is over. Your deck didn't function. I think Pioneer is powerful enough and proactive enough that you don't need to build your deck around this high variance payoff. Like Rakdos Midrange is also a Thoughtseize deck. It gets better removal and it has an insane clock. Just full of big beefy creatures. Uh, you don't need to do crazy Parhelion loop stuff to, to attack in this format. We saw that game against Mono Green against Ari where he just went infinite on turn three or four in game one. And I won by goldfishing in game two. And then he goldfished again in game three. And that deck is hyper consistent. You get eight land or elves. You get to play Ponder in the form of Oath of Nyssa. That's the only Pioneer deck that gets to do that. While this is cool, and I'm glad it is a deck that exists, it's not one that I would personally take to a tournament. And since we're talking about preparing for Magic on Philly, specifically with all this Pioneer content, this is the first of the Pioneer decks I've played that I'm just like, yeah, not for me. Spirits was powerful and proactive. Rakdos Midrange was powerful and proactive. This is only powerful and coin flip if it's actually proactive or not. It also just fizzles a lot to its own stuff. And that's my opinion of Grease Fang after playing five matches with it and playing against it a few times. Obviously, my sample size is small. I'm sure my sideboard strategies were not perfect, but just as an archetype, trying to get too many moving parts together in the powerful Pioneer format. Red Rags, thank you for asking me to play this. Everyone else, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, especially if you like Pioneer. You gotta let me know that. Let your voice be heard. Leave a comment. Send this video to your friends. The view counts do the talking around here, so that'll determine if I do much more of this in the future. I do have one more Pioneer deck in the queue that'll be out before MagicCon Philly. And after that, it's up to the viewers. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, check out the Patreon and all the other stuff that supports the channel. And I'll see you next time.